affiliative horse behavior. Here we see the stallion. Here we see some mares of his band. And on this picture you see the whole band. The stallion is standing at the left. Affiliative horse behavior. It was Charles Darwin who said in 1851, if I'm correct, that the relationships are the glue that keeps animals, social animals, together. And when I started my research on horses, I knew a lot about uh, well, how they care for each other, how they take care of their children and, or their offspring. Uh, but I have to admit, <laughs> when you start to observe, it gets more and more interesting. At the left here you see the stallion, at the right you see a mare. And, well, you don't have to be a horse whisperer or somebody very, very, very specific uh, studied to see that these horses are grazing, but they're not just grazing, they're showing a lot of affiliative behavior, they're doing this face to face and then come together and then be together. Is this a social relationship? Well, why does it always have to be, according to humans, when we look at other animals, uh, it always has to be something very, very interesting, fascinating, wow, it has to be allo grooming. Well, it's not. It's also the way how they choose position, how they synchronize and how they show each other uh, by small and indeed also big gestures. Look at him, look at him. Gestures that they are together. This is a very nice picture, a nice movie of um, synchronizing. The horses are all looking at the left. They come from the right. So when you observe horses, you can pretty easy uh, well, calculate more or less where they might be going, unless there are, of course, predators. The horse, the second one from the right to the left, is the stallion. He's easy to remember, to recognize, because the stallions have long hair and the mares are cut. They cut the hair and the tail. It's pretty hygienic uh, to do that, but it's tradition in Spain, so I'm not going to talk about that. Look at the face of one of his mares and how he is grazing. He's being very charming. He's a very gentle guy. And I think that's why these mares bond with him. You see now. Yeah, but they're only grazing, somebody said. Yes, they are only grazing. Definitely, they are grazing. But they are not only grazing. They're grazing and making choices in, in what they do. If you look at his face, for instance, you see his calmness. And I'm a woman. Um, if it, he, he would be an attractive personality for me. Because I like this calmness. I don't like these upset horses who are bullying all the time and trying to, to move other horses and trying to do this and you have to follow me and now, now you have to do this and that and blah, 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 blah. That's not realistic. This is reality. These are wild horses. These are horses who make their own choices, who choose with whom they want to live and with whom they don't want to live. And making choices is something that's underestimated. When we look at domesticated horses, we see a lot of conflicts, we see a lot of fights, we see a lot of injuries. But well, come on, we put horses together, not because we, um, we we think it over. No, we have a field and we want to buy two horses, so put them together and they will fight it out. Well, they don't. Well, they will fight, but in nature, horses don't fight. Again, an observation young mare with a spot. I think she's young because she looks pretty young compared to the other mares. It's a choice they make. And it's a choice that we in domesticated situations cannot afford. You know, we, we cannot let horses choose. Or we can be creative. I mean, that's something I would definitely recommend to people in domesticated horses. Sometimes put an extra fence in between it. They can still look through the fence, depends on how. Look at this, look at this beautiful moment. I just want you to enjoy it the way I did, enjoyed it too. Because it's lovely. It's the power of the mare. It's the force of the stallion to be there, to be her partner. 
these horses definitely have made a choice. She chooses for him, and later on in the movie you will see how how she uh, empowers him when he has to do something that might get out of hand. But, but when he meets another stand, and it doesn't get out of hand, it doesn't get out of hand at all. He's a very nice guy for his mares, and that's exactly what they need. What I wanted to say in domesticated situations that I sometimes I really don't believe. The more you know about horses, the more you feel upset when you hear stories like, yeah, well, he has to listen to me because I'm the boss and I'm this, and I'm that. Well, horses they don't work with bosses. They, they have this glue, this affiliative behavior, these, all these small gestures. And I know, look at the ears. I know there are many gestures that people don't even see. Not because they don't want to see them, but because most horsemanship uh, things are focused on pressure and release and conditioning. You have to condition your horse in this and you have to teach him this and you have to teach him that. Well, this is behavior that you don't have to teach a horse. Only if your horse has the capacities of being a kind and gentle horse, then I think it's very good to work on this, to maintain this behavior. Look at this. Yes, they're grazing, but they make choices. They choose for each other. So if you have horses at home who don't uh, seem to be friends, then please put a fence in between. Let them get used to each other. Give them time. These horses know each other from birth. They're not always in the same band, but they have seen each other. They know each other. They know the existence of the other one. And that helps. Anyway, I just thought I should publish this because this is one of the most beautiful things I've seen. Affiliative behavior, just being together with the one you like most. I mean, we're not that different. We're exactly the same as they are. We like to spend time with the ones we like. Thank you.